to focus on um, using the properties of logarithms um, to expand or condense them. This is just a review of the logarithmic properties. The first one in the blue here is um, taking a logarithm of a times or x times y and separating it out into two separate logarithms. So you have your x and your y, and notice the operation is plus. So when you multiply, the operation that splits them up is going to be a plus. The next one is division. So the operation here is division. So to separate it is going to be a subtraction. The last property is when you have a power. Notice that this power is right here. And what you can do is you can bring it down in front so that also multiplies. So that power comes in front of the logarithm. All right, so let's do some examples here. So we want to write this expression in expanded form. Um, so if we notice this first logarithm has a 2 times x. So to expand it out in a separate logarithm, we're going to use that first property and say logarithm of base 9 of 2 plus logarithm base 9 of x. So we're separating out this into two separate logarithms. All right, let's do this one more time. Very similar. So now we have logarithm base 4 of 3 plus logarithm base 4 of x plus logarithm base 4 of y. So three separate logarithms. So we're using that top uh, property on the previous slide of note. All right. Example C. Now the operation is division. So if you remember, that's our second property on the previous PDF, is we're going to divide it. So we have a logarithm of base 2 of 5. Now since it's division, we're going to subtract these logarithms. So remember these are subtraction. All right, example D. This is a power. So if you remember, that's the third property. It's going to bring that 5 down in front. So you have 5 times logarithm base 2 of x. All right, now we're going to get into some multiple properties within one problem set. All right, the first thing I'm going to do is take care of this 3. This 3 has to be brought down in front because it's a power. So we have 3 times the logarithm base 2 of a times b. Now let's look inside the bracket. This is a logarithm that can be separated out into two different logarithms by the operation of addition. So we still have a 3 out in front. So the logarithm base 2 of a plus logarithm base 2 of b. Now with this 3, we can distribute it in to both logarithms. So it equals 3 times the logarithm base 2 of a plus 3 times the logarithm base 2 of b. All right, last example on this slide. All right, this is a notation for a cube root. So what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and think about how to rewrite that in exponential form. So I have a logarithm base 4. I'm going to get rid of the cube root and change that to an exponential of raising it to the one third power. So it's out of a radical form, now into an exponential. Now we're going to apply one of the properties. We're going to bring this one third down in front. So you have a one third as your multiplier, and then log base 4 of x times y times z. Now I'm going to run out of room here, so I'm just going to scroll over here a little bit to the left. And this property, next, is we're going to expand it into three separate logarithms by addition. So we have one-third times log base 4 of x plus log base 4 of y plus log base 4 of z. Now, just like in the previous example, we're going to distribute that one-third all three logarithms. So our final answer will be one-third times log base 4 of x plus one-third log base 4 of y plus one-third log base 4 of z. Now, on the next slide, we're going to do the opposite. We're going to take these logarithms and condense them back into one single logarithm using the same properties. So we're going
referring to as a single logarithm. So when you hear the word condense, think of these problems that we're going to do next. All right. So in order for us to combine logarithms back together, we have to have the same base. Both of them are base 3. So the operation in between them is subtraction. So remember that second property now. To combine those together, we're going to do division. So logarithm base 3 of 10 divided by 5. Now look at 10 simplify 10 divided by 5. Yes, you can. 10 divided by 5 is 2. And now we're done. We condense this back from two logarithms into one. All right. Next one. We have three logarithms, all with the same base, b, c, and b. So let's take care of these two logarithms first. So notice the operation in between them is a plus symbol. So to combine those together, we're going to multiply. So logarithm base c of x times y, and then we still have that minus logarithm base c of x times b. All right. Now look at the operation in between these two logarithms. Again, they're the same base. So if we have a subtraction, we can combine those in together by division. So logarithm base c of xy divided by xb. Now, let's look inside the parentheses. Can we do any simplifying? Yes, we can cancel that x and that x out. So we're now left with logarithm base z of y over z. We condense this to one logarithm, where before it was three logarithms. All right, heading down to example c. All right, we're trying to condense these. Before we condense these into two logarithms, we have to apply the third property. We have to bring these powers back up. All right, so we have a logarithm base 3 of y, and now the power is going to be the 7th power. Subtract, bring the 4 up, logarithm base 3 of x, raising it to the 4th power. So we combined, not combined yet, we've uh, taken our multipliers in front and three created them as exponents. Now look at the operation between the two logarithms. Is subtraction. So to combine them into one logarithm, we divide them. So y to the seventh divided by x to the fourth. All right, last example. This is a little more tricky because it doesn't look like we have separate logarithms, but this is number three here. Think about the logarithm, and that's a base 10, divided by 3. Well, what we can do is we can rewrite that as one-third. Because dividing by 3 is going to be multiplying by one-third. So I have times log base 10 of 5. Now, what can I do with that one-third? Think about it. When you have a one-third in front or any multiplier in front, you can take the next step and bring it back up as a power. So now I have log base 10 of 5 raised to the one-third. Now you'll probably remember from earlier in this video, when you have a exponent that's a fraction, you can recreate it as a radical. So this is your power, and then this is going to be your index, or whatever it is. So if it's a divided by 2, it's going to be a square root. If it's a divided by 3, it's going to be a cube root. If it's divided by 4, it's a fourth root. So now I have a logarithm. Recreate my radical, 5, my power is 1, and my index is 3. So I have a logarithm of base 